So uh, as as you as you know, uh, this batch of uh, law school preparatory program is a second one entitled uh, Liwanag sa, uh, the, the group name is Liwanag sa Dilim. No? The first one is Agat Buhay, which you already know why, why that is. No? Pero uh, I would like to highlight that this is in some ways similar to the first batch, pero not as, ex not as detailed, I mean, I mean not as uh, seg segmented as the others, uh, as the first one. No? Kasi, sorry, in the first one kasi, we tr I tried to uh, discuss it why is this show okay i tried to discuss it based on the categorizations ng bar exam uh we started with the constitution and then etc hanggang sa dulo pero here i'm trying to be more general in discussing yung law natin and it is more uh leaning towards yung sa ano sa current events if you notice the readings no Kasi under uh, eh, under current events ano uh, sa current events kasi it is where you can apply kung ano yung mga matututunan niyo dito sa sa program natin and i i intentionally left yung mga practical tips about law school at the end una to of course for you to listen first to the, sa, sa mga naunang discussions and at the same time in order for uh, you not to be overwhelmed by the procedure, by the technicalities, by the nitty-gritty ng law school without going through the ano, parang the ideal preparatory uh, program na dapat yung more on the substance of the law first. No? Of course, we, I, will not, I will not be able to discuss all of the things that you want to know in, the, in, a, in a matter of what, two hours uh, for this day. Pero... I, I will try as much as possible to give you an overview of uh, what to expect in law uh, what to expect as a whole in law school with the uh, uh, with the current events as my as my tool towards uh, discussing the topic. So I hope that is clear. I hope the intention is clear. Kung bakit ganon structured yung ating program. So today I will be discussing about the Philippine legal system. Basically, after this uh, this uh, topic, will will cover a broad, parang uh, a broad interplay between different uh, different uh, government aid, government bodies, uh, gov uh, the different uh, concepts that make up the entire uh, legal system that we are calling. No, and where do lawyers uh, see their place in this entire legal system? So yun yung intention nitong uh, nitong day 1 na to. Basically this is an overview of the entire thing. Ano? Where do your uh where do the laws fall? Paano nangyayari? Paano nagkakaroon ng laws? What are laws ev even to begin with, no? So for day 1 we will be discussing the Philippine legal system. Uh our outline is uh simple because my intention is to finish it in 30 minutes no yun yung original naman na napag-usapan natin uh, nga pala if i'm if my voice is breaking up please tell me para at least uh, i can shift to another uh, connection if that's needed no so uh, the outline of the uh, discussion will be uh, first yung laws and how they are made ano ba yung batas and paano ba nang paano ba nagagawa ang batas in the context of the philippines uh, next is yung sources of law at ano yung hierarchy ng mga batas na ito. Next is yung brief overview ng 1987 Philippine Constitution and its components. Of course, siguro by now you already know that uh, the, the Constitution is the most fundamental at most important na batas sa Pilipinas. No? Uh, and every other law revolves around the Constitution. If it does not conform with the Constitution, it is unconstitutional therefore null and void yun yung concept natin ng constitution but i will discuss that in detail later no uh, and an another topic here is a very general one no? how does the justice justice system work uh we are we will be mostly focusing on criminal justice on and how it is uh and how, how it is done and meron naman kayong ano meron naman kayong set of readings to give you an an idea of what it means ano and the role of lawyers in the legal system. After the, after the discussion, 
uh, I will we will have we will pause for uh, siguro two minutes break and then we will go back to to you no kaya kaya naman na you will ask your questions but later on I will uh, I will be asking a different set of questions I mean I mean I will I collated some of the questions that you raised a while ago and then later uh, we will answer them I will answer them and then you can ask your questions if in if you think I was not able to pick your question, pero importante siya sa tingin nyo, uh, you can ask them later. That's where the interaction came, uh, comes uh, comes in. No? Pero along the way, uh, unfortunately, I cannot entertain questions while I'm discussing. No? Siguro that's uh, uh, a major major disadvantage ng ganitong setup ng online. But if it we were uh, a face-to-face -face discussion, uh, I would gladly add uh, answer questions uh, while I'm discussing. So, laws and how they are made. So, Black's Law Dictionary de defines uh, law as uh, a body of rules, uh, a body of rules of action or conduct prescribed by controlling authority and having binding legal force. That which may must be obeyed and followed by citizens su subject to sanctions or legal consequences. That is what we call a law. No? So, yeah. if we try to dissect this uh, definition of law, uh, we, will, uh, we will later on see that it is really, we, we are talking here re really of state law. state law. Of course, there are other kinds of laws like uh, yung moral law or yung... Uh, or yung ano or yung divine law which is based on the uh, rules prescribed by the gods which is uh which is parang written in various forms uh, across religions or we have the physical law or the, the law of inertia mga ganyan or we have other kinds of laws no but we here in for this pro uh, for this uh program we are specifically talking about state law of course for for obvious reasons diba because uh, law school is really just about uh, state laws in general, no? With a few exceptions ng natural law, which is in civil law, pero very minimal lang na discussion yan. Uh, so we, we dissect this, this, uh, with this definition. Of course, laws are bodies of rules of action or conduct. This is common among other types of laws, no? Pero here, uh, in state law, it is prescribed by a controlling authority. Here in the Philippines, ang gumagawa ng mga batas natin, ang nagpe-prescribe ng, ng ng ano natin ng laws is the Congress. The we have two uh, we have two chambers or we have two houses of the Congress as we will see in week 2, no? Mas nasa week 2 pa yun banda. Uh, and that is the com controlling authority. Whatever is the law, kung ano ba ng batas sa atin, uh, is con is base it's ba basically the ano, the it's basically the Congress that's deciding what should be the law no and it has binding legal force it in short it is obligatory as a general rule lahat tayo covered ng batas no unless the law itself limits the application uh, for example may mga batas na ano uh, may mga batas na applicable lang to certain sections of society mga ganyan pero as a general rule lahat ng batas ay applicable sa atin okay uh, the, and that has binding legal force. Anong ibig sabihin kapag may binding legal force? It can be su subject to sanctions or legal consequences later kapag if you do not follow it. No? For example, uh, traffic violations. When you say, when you, when you say traffic violations, uh, di ba meron tayong rules of traffic? If you violated the rules of traffic, uh, there will be consequences. Uh, siguro, uh, just to give you an an idea of how this works do you know yung recent case recent uh current event na about sa no contact apprehension policy in that uh policy diba in regular uh in regular law enforcement activity merong nagtitiket na enforcer ng kung ano yung violation of the law that is one way of enforcing the law no in enforcing batas because it has binding legal force and you if you violate it there is sanction in the case of no contact apprehension program, uh, well, it is the ano, it is uh, technology that determines whether you uh, you committed a violation or not, diba? But that no contact apprehension program is based 
on a certain law is based on a local ordinance or based on national law that is implemented by the local government unit. It has binding legal force and if you fail to follow it, there will be consequences. Because uh, as highlighted there, it must be obeyed and followed by the citizens. No, There must be common observance and benefit. Uh, we've, for in, in the case of traffic, uh, traffic laws, we all benefit from the existence of these laws. For example, di ba kapag naka, pag may uh, two uh, dalawang lanes, uh, dalawang yellow yellow lines, for example, sa kalsada natin, that is an indication na you are not supposed to overtake in those areas. That is the law, di ba? That, that is a law that is designed for us to obey. Bakit? Kasi that area is a danger, is a dangerous area. No? Uh, dangerous yung area na yun, kaya nilagyan nila ng signage na ganun. And if you do not follow it, there will be consequences. There will be deaths. There will be uh, injuries later on. Kaya hindi ka dapat, sum hindi ka, di mo dapat sinusawa yun. And in order for the, in order for the law, in, uh, in order for the law to be implemented well, uh, there are enforcers that enforce it. Ano? May mga, may mga nag, uh, may mga naniningil ng ticket pag hindi ka sumusunod sa but as trapiko. Why? Because it the law at the end of the day benefits everyone, no? Hindi yan uh, yung pag-observe ng mga tao ng sa batas trapiko is parang is a covenant among all of us that we need to protect each other, that we need to obey the laws in order to protect each other. And if you violate those laws, it can have uh, serious consequences sa community natin. So, di ba? Uh it regulates your actions, the law regulates your actions precisely because it has an intended benefit for all of us. No? Kaya common benefit ang, uh, may mer merong aspect ng common benefit ang mga batas sa Pilipinas. No? So, yun. Uh, these are what we call laws. No? Paano naman, nag na paano naman nagkakaroon ng batas? Okay, this is the process in the Philippines. Ano? And this is just an oversimplification of a very complex, ano no, very complex process na, na pinagdadaanan ng batas. No? So first, uh, with, a law cannot be a law without a bill. Ang tinatawag natin na bill ay uh, is a proposed law na hindi pa naman na hindi pa naipapasa. Kung baga, proposal ng isang, ng isang ano, ng isang legislate, le, legislator para maging batas. For example, uh, and here, according to this, uh, bill originates from either house. Ano ba tong house na tinatawag natin dito? Meron tayong dalawang houses of Congress. Diba? Kung uh, iisipin mong maigi, uh, yung mga batas natin ay nanggagaling sa Congress. And that Congress is divided into two. The House of Senate, which compose the Senators, and the House of Representatives, which compose the District and Party List Representatives. So, ano yan? Uh, dalawang houses yon and that will be discussed on the next week no in detail next week so either of these houses can propose laws pwede silang mag suggest ng batas kumbaga and and yung suggestion nila must have already a draft meron ng draft yan now uh, after that draft uh, is is crafted no uh, it undergoes three readings. Uh, first reading, second reading, third reading. The first reading is all, merely on the title. No? Kung ano ba yung tungkol ba saan yung ano mo na yun, yung batas mo na yun. The second reading is reading in full. Yung bu buong batas, ganyan. And the third reading is for uh, for ano, polishing na lang. For clarificatory matters, mga ganyan. Doon yun sinasettle sa third reading. Now, if nagkaroon ng if na approve yon doon sa house kung saan siya nagsimula for example nang galing siya sa House of Representatives so kapag approve siya sa House of Representatives ipapasa yan sa isa pang house which is for example kag galing sa House of Representatives ipapasa siya sa House of Senate no in the same manner yung House of Senate will do uh, three readings of that same bill no kung ano yung ipasa doon sa ano sa Congress uh Ay, sorry, sa House of Representatives, ipapasa yan sa House of Senate. Magte-take magte na naman ng three readings yan. Ngayon, kung approve siya, i-consolidate siya sa bill, ay sa, ano, sa House of Representatives, for example. Babalik siya dun sa origin niya para i-consolidate. No? Ngayon, 
paano kapag uh, okay wala pa, ano po ano pala muna yan ay approve siya paano pag hindi siya na approve well it uh, it can go back to the original house or it can die di ba wala nang there's not, no law to talk about pero uh, what if there are two versions of the same law for example pareho sila ng title pareho sila ng subject matter pero magkaibang bat magkaibang house ng galing for example merong uh, law na si, merong isang law yung sa, sa house merong isang bill sa house of representatives about um, ano ba same sex marriage meron ding bill sa senate ng ng ano ng uh, ng same sex marriage how do you reconcile those paano mo pag sa pagtutugmain yung dalawang versions so that uh, acceptable sa dalawang dalawang houses that's where uh, bicameral conference committee comes in sa bicameral conference committee merong isang committee that is composed of the members of the house of representatives and house of senate that meet no they meet together they make uh they parang they reconcile parang binubuo nila parang uh, they are consolidating yung batas para magkaroon siya ng isang form that is acceptable to both houses and then after the bicameral conference committee has approved yung ano yung yung bill it is now sent to the president for signing no ganun din yung process kapag ano lang kapag iisang house lang nang galing so kapag na-approve na siya ipapasa na siya sa president for signing now when does a bill become a law paano nagiging batas ang bill so that is sent to the president for signing no una kapag inapprove siya at si nine pag inapprove at pinirmahan automatically that is passed as, that that becomes a law no okay na yan tapos eh paano kapag wala siyang ginawa doon sa batas according to the constitution kapag walang ginawa ang president for 30 days doon sa batas kung naipasa sa kanya no tapos wala siyang ginawa hindi niya inaksyonan hindi niya rin kin- kinontra uh, it becomes automatically a law kahit na naiwan lang for example he intends really to not to sign it not to sign it pero uh, naiwan niya sa just niya nakalimutan niya it automatically becomes a law no and the third the third ano the third uh, way is paano kapag ni-reject naman ng president ayaw niya si pirmahan binito niya that is what we call veto no uh, ni ni-re- reject niya pero yung objections niya dapat nakalagay in writing nakasulat in writing so it, i object to this because 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 uh, lalagyan niya lahat ng reasons niya for that however kahit na ni reject na yung batas if both houses vote to pass it pag pinasa ng parehong house uh, through by, by overturning a veto by uh, over uh, over overruling the veto it becomes a law anyway kahit walang signature ng president okay so there are three ways pag pinasa ay eh, pag pag, pin, pag pinirmahan kapag walang ginawa ang naglapse ang 30 days or kapag inobject pero in over in overrule yung kanyang objection that that law become uh, that bill becomes a law okay so sana malinaw yan pero uh, let me just clarify again that this is an oversimplification marami pang ano diyan marami pang processes along the way uh, hindi ko pa nabanggit where they where they do the debates diba dyan sa readings ginagawa yung debate uh, yung co- yung committee diba may mga committee on ways and means committee on committee on women mga ganyan committee on transportation ganun ganun uh, that is prior actually pag naipas pag ano na pag uh, nagpasa ng bill ang isang ang isang uh, representative ang or isang senator pupunta mo na sa committee uh, but that is really just ano parang uh, medyo ano na yun, expounded na yung version na yun. pero in in essence ganito siya nangyayari no uh, so here ano yung sources natin ng law at ano yung hierarchy nila uh, where does uh, yung mga bat- uh, saan ba nang gagaling yung mga batas natin no if we speak of uh, state law we are we are ano uh, we are really confined with uh, laws that are passed uh, by the by the congress diba y- yun yung strictest definition natin ng ng law no 
And on top of that hierarchy is the Constitution. Yung 1987 Constitution is the most supreme of all the laws na meron tayo sa Pilipinas. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, yung every law, every ordinance, every executive order, administrative issuance must conform with the, with the Constitution. Kasi yung Constitution, kung baka, nandoon yung lahat, na, na, kinocover niya ang halos lahat ng aspects of human, uh, of uh, our experience as a state, our experience as a nation. No? Naka-encapsulate naka, na lahat doon yung intentions natin. So, uh, anything that goes against that that great law, the Constitution, is rendered unconstitutional at kaya wala siyang effect. So that is, y- yun yung ano na, no? yun yung, uh, y- that, that, that's why it, ano, it occupies the topmost uh, portion of our pyramid. Next is we have yung national laws. Ito na yung mga Republic Acts, Batas Pambansa, uh, Republic Act, Act Number, mga ganun, Commonwealth Act Number, ganyan. And in certain cases, no, in certain points in our history, the president had the power to uh, create laws. Okay? Kaya during the time of Marcos, especially during the time of the ano, the martial law period, merong uh, executive order. I'm sorry, uh, presidential decree pala. Presidential decree nung kay Marcos. So, the presidential decree are have the effect of a law kasi merong legislative meron silang for some reason they have they they uh, he has legislative power no at the time during the time of Cory under the revolutionary government which lasted for like a year uh, meron din mga executive orders uh, these executive orders are well acts of the president pero at the time because of the freedom constitution meron ding legislative powers ang uh, ang president because of the extreme kumbaga, na, na, na wipe out ang government eh, at the time parang it's really clean, from clean slate ang government after the martial law because of the abuses at saka talaga namang at the time uh, captive ng ng pre, ng ano ng president ang uh, ang congress at ang uh, judiciary that is the reason in the first place why he was able to declare uh, martial law without ano without really the uh, objection uh, parang staunch objection ng mga ng mga branches na to no kasi captive talaga ka, they are captives no so at the time uh meron merong presidential decree uh, kay Marcos nga and in Cory meron siyang executive orders that uh, that were that have the same effect as law now uh, on the side ng national laws we can see here yung jurisprudence na tinatawag natin what are jurisprudence these are decisions of the Supreme Court interpreting laws and the Constitution. Now, there are instances kasi na that the law is deficient. Kaba kulang parang hindi malinaw yung intention or hindi malinaw yung, def- yung meaning ng uh, Constitution or ng batas. No? So, the jurisprudence is there. The cases are there to illuminate on certain cases, on certain uh, aspects of the law. And that, uh, il- and that, it, that becomes part of our laws. Judicial decisions of the Supreme Court become part of our law. So, yun, that is jurisprudence. And also, uh, treaties or uh, treaties and international agreements uh, that we enter into because we we dahil may tawag tayong doctrine of in, uh, doctrine of incorporation in the Philippines form part of our national laws. Kung bagay yung mga agreements natin with other countries, yung mga treaties that we enter into with other countries, yung mga bilateral multilateral agreements natin with other countries form part of our law. Kung bagay automatically nagiging bahagi siya ng batas natin. Okay? But they are not siya sabi ko they are not in the strictest sense law in the sense that they are passed by congress no so another another at the lower end is yung executive orders or administrative issuances by the president and the executive uh, uh, and the executive branches uh, and, the exec- and the executive branch rather so mayroong executive orders na lumalabas mga memorandum circulars mga ganyan these are intended to implement yung mga batas. Again, these are not laws in the strictest sense that Congress made them, pero these are orders, these are circulars that are intended para i-implement yung batas. No? 
this nagbibigay ito yung nagbibigay ng rules kung paano for example i, kung pa, i implement yung mga batas na ginawa ng Congress this comes from the executive department no pero they are not technically laws in the strict sense no and finally we have the local ordinances yung mga local ordinances natin yung mga batas na ginagawa sa local level Uh, they are effective as long as they conform with national laws, as long as they conform with the constitution. No, if they do not conform with the with the national laws and the constitution, they are uh, well, they don't. Parang they are null and void. No, but meron ng limited lawmaking powers ang ang local governments. That's why we have local ordinances. Okay, a brief overview of the constitution. Uh, Uh, ito, ito, akin lang to ha. This classification is mine. Uh, the, uh, parang I do not claim to have taken this anywhere. no Pero ito yung summary ng, uh, ito yung overview ng constitution natin. If we try to thematize them, uh, uh, put them in thematic uh, boxes. So, if you want to, if you want to understand the constitution as a summary, kung gusto mong shortcut, ng version ng constitution, we can have, uh, uh, you can read the preamble. Because the preamble is the parang preface ng constitution. Di ba sa mga libro, meron tayong preface? Kung what the book contains, mga ganon, ganon din yung preamble. Uh, the national territory, of course, uh, saan ba ang applicability niya? Ano hanggang saan ba ang hangganan ng territory ng Pilipinas? That is Article 1. And, uh, In Article 2, the Declaration of Principles and State Policies, dito nakalagay in general terms lahat ng uh, lahat ng mga basically lahat ng values, lahat ng principles, lahat ng policies ng Estado. This is just a few sections, pero kung baga, if you want to see a summary, a summary of the entire uh, constitution, and the entire sentiment of the entire document, this is Article 2. Okay? Uh, we have here yung general and miscellaneous, uh, ano, miscellaneous uh, articles. Yung mga medyo hindi, wala sa, ano, wala sa, pala na ito? Wala sa, kumbang hindi siya yung main na, na contents, pero they are still uh, very important sa constitution natin. The general provisions, para rin siyang declaration of principles and state policies if you think about it. Yung sa amendments or revisions, uh, how do you amend and revise the constitution? This is one of the most contentious, uh, most important parts if you are uh, if you are being serious about your study of the constitution. Ito yan, amendments and revisions. How do you amend? How do you revise? And transitory provisions. This is the provision, uh, to. these are the provisions that are parang envision to be uh, parang yung steps towards full implementation ng constitution natin. Now, we have focus areas. Merong, uh, this is, this, these are the articles which I call yung focus areas ng constitution. They are specific uh, areas ng constitution natin na binibigyan diin in the constitution. Like national economy and patrimony under article 12, social justice and human rights under article 13, Education, Science and Technology, Arts, Culture and Sports under Article 14, and the Family under Article 15. Uh, we have also yung mga provisions of the Constitution that involve rights. Uh, although most of the articles naman involve rights, pero mostly kasi itong mga articles na ito are more saturated with uh, provisions on rights. Like yung Bill of Rights, of course, that is the, ano, that is, solely focused on on human rights itong bill of rights na to uh, kung gusto mong malaman yung mga rights of an accused mga ganyan uh, your gener rights in general nandiyan yan sa bill of rights citizenship uh, nandiyan yan how do you determine who are filipino citizens mga ganyan and who are not uh, suffrage uh, your right to vote is basic is ano is uh, summarized under article 5 And of course, yung social justice and human rights, which are uh, which is under Article 13. And uh, if you want to see the structure of the government and how its officials are disciplined, etong mga articles na sumusunod ang tingnan natin. Of course, the legislative, executive, and judicial departments, which are Article 6, 7, and 8 respectively. 
uh, that will uh, itong itong ano lang na ito article 6 7 and 8 will be the the meat of discussion for week 2 constitutional commissions under article 9 these are the commissions that do not fall under any of these uh, departments no they are independent uh, commission on Audit, commission, uh, Civil Service Commission, and uh, Commission on Elections. No? Uh, we have also have the local government units and the accountability of public officers. How do we make our public officers accountable? That is under Article 11. Okay. Now, if you'll notice, these are, ve these, are gen uh, these are the general themes under the Constitution. Pero there are uh, there are other laws that are uh, parang that derive yung ano nila yung origins nila from these from these articles of the constitution okay uh, next okay so how do you amend or revise the constitution diba in sa isang regular na batas it is enough that the congress will pass a new law sapat na sa ba, sa sa ano sa sa ordinaryong batas na uh paeta that kunare kung may pinasa ang, ang congress na bagong batas sub, uh, ano na superseded na yung yung mga nauna no and that's it pero since the constitution is sabi ko sa inyo the constitution is the expression of the Filipino people's uh, ideals values principles kaya mas mahirap siyang i-amend or i-revise okay one uh proposal there are two stages, rather, in uh, there are two stages in amending or revising the constitution. First is constitutional convention, second is constitutional assembly, and third is people's initiative. So let's start with people's initiative. No, uh, the people as a whole can uh, can propose amendments to the constitution. Pero hindi hindi pwede ang revision. What's the distinction? Okay, uh, amendment ang tawag. Kung ang pagbabago sa constitution ay piecemeal, big sabihin mali, maliit lang, uh, of only a few uh, provisions of the constitution will be changed. And and uh, uh, either ano, either konti lang or maliit lang ang babaguhin sa constitution or it's not substantial enough, no? Hindi siya ganoon ka substantial to change everything. So that is amendment. Ang people's initiative applies only to amendments but not revisions. Sa revision kasi, when we say revisions, it is uh, it changes a lot of the articles, it changes a lot of the sections of the constitution. Kaya substantial siya, marami. Marami kang mababago. Okay. Now, this constitutional convention, uh, anong difference ng dalawang yan? Yung constitutional convention and constitutional assembly. Now, constitutional convention requires na meron dapat uh, na represented ang bawat ang mga sectors ng society represented ng mga experts ang panel na magagawa ng draft ng constitution okay for example in the case of uh, in the case of the 1987 constitution may mga pare may mga may mga farmers may mga sectoral representatives may mga lawyers that were consulted to construct the 1987 constitution natin no and in order for it to be passed, kailangan ng two-thirds ng vote ng Congress. So that is the hard, kumbaga, yan yung pinakamahirap na paraan ng pag-propose ng amendment sa Constitution. The second one is the Constitutional Assembly. This is a lot, uh, this is a little easier than Constitutional Convention because uh, it, only, uh, it only requires the Congress itself. Sa Congress lang mismo, uh, iikot yung paggawa ng proposal and not necessarily uh, and not necessarily including other persons, no, other representations. Pero this is harder to pass because it requires two thirds vote of the Congress. Okay, two uh, three fourths rather. It requires three fourths vote ng lahat ng members of Congress. So this is uh, although mas madali siyang buuin, mas mahirap siyang ipasa. Pero in a Congress that is a super majority na kumbaga parang they are on the same page, all on the same page, the Constitutional Assembly is really a good route to propose amendments to the, uh, uh, propose amendments or revision of the Constitution. Yan. So those are, that's the difference ha, ng mga yan. But 
unlike yung mga ibang ano, unlike yung mga ibang batas na kapag naipasa na sa sa both houses of Congress, eh okay na, no? Here, in the Constitution, you need ratification. What do we mean by ratification? Uh, the people, everyone na allowed to vote, everyone na registered voter, will cast their vote whether to agree or not sa proposed amendment or revision. Okay? Basically, you will line up, by people of uh, legal age will line up sa mga ano natin, yung mga registered voters will line up sa uh, mga mga precincts to cast their votes. Majority. Majority wins. Kung approve sa lahat, uh, approve sa majority, then go. Okay? Now, usually, kasi since siyempre kung isipin mo, ano, mahirap yung logistics nito. Kung magpropropose ka, magpaparatify ka ng constitution, eh, marami-raming resources ang kailangan. Kaya usually, uh, a, good, a good thing to do here is to parang itaon siya sa, sa ano, itaon siya sa election. Para, aside from your ballot, you will also vote for the ratification of a constitution. No? Uh, pero, in in my lifetime, wala pa namang ratification na naganap ng constitution. So, I, I, I really don't know. I really can't talk from experience. So, yan. Now, uh, we, let's go to the justice system and the role of lawyers. Now, we will uh, look into this, uh, ano, into this frame, into this, ano, into this framework, and we will go back to it once we go to next week. No, uh, how do we see the criminal? How do we, ano, how do we go about the justice system by looking at these three branches of government? Actually, there are other, uh, other factors at play here pero uh, hindi na natin kinonsider for simplicity's sake no so here uh, the legislative department creates the laws that define the violations of law no uh, sa congress naka doon nakalagay kung uh, do, sa sa mga batas na ginagawa ng congress doon nakalagay kung ano yung mga i-define niya kung ano yung mga violation ng batas next sa ang korte mo dapat Sa korte or government agency mo dapat dudulog yung concern mo. It's the Congress, uh, it's the task of the Legislative Department. And it's also the Legislative Department's task to prescribe penalties. Nakalagay na doon kung, sin, kung magkano ang penalties mo for a violation. Unless, dinelegate ng Congress yung, para, yung, ano, yung uh, pag-prescribe ng fees sa Executive Department. No? Yan. Next, sa, sa executive department naman, cre uh, it creates rules to implement laws. No? Gaya nga sinabi ko sa, kanyo, sa inyo kanina, yung administ administrative issuances, yung executive orders, implementing rules and regulations, yung mga IRR, sa executive lahat yan ang gagaling. And uh, they prosecute violations of laws. For this particular example, uh, for this particular case, it is the... Uh, DOJ, uh, it is the DOJ through the National Prosecutory Service na nagpo-prosecute ng mga crimes, no? Uh, si most mostly eh, mostly but not all. Uh, ano, si si DOJ ang nagdedetermine, nag-file ng information if there is a reasonable uh, if there's a reason to believe that a person is guilty of a, of a violation of law. Pero hindi hindi lang siya limited sa ganon. Meron din tayong tinatawag na the executive department decides cases where administrative expertise is required. For example, sa traffic violations, it is the LTO's turf, no? Uh, LTO ang ano dyan, ang ang involved. So, it is the LTO who prosecutes and decides on uh, matters of traffic law. Ano? So, ganun. Meron silang quasi-judicial functions. Uh, pero in, in a sense, it's administrative rather, no? Uh, kasi ano... Uh, pero yun, administrative yun kasi ang expertise on traffic law belongs to the LTO. Uh, BIR, for example, on matters of taxes, uh, they have quasi-judicial functions to adjudicate yung mga cases involving taxes. So, before it reaches the courts, doon muna sa, uh, doon muna sa BIR. And the judicial department, of course, uh, adjudicates violations of laws. Uh, dito dinidecide kung ano yung mga violation ng batas 
uh, kung kung reliable ba yung tao ganyan and the the judicial department also uh, makes procedural rules for all kinds of cases to, exp to expedite cases and protect rights of people so si judicial department ang bahala sa pag make sure na yung mga procedures in court procedures na mag uh, na kung paano isi-secure yung mga ano natin yung mga karapatan natin is uh, parang incorporated in the framework ng legal system natin so where do lawyers come in all of this uh, in in this system no saan po papasok ang lawyers in the legislative department there are some of them who are lawyers although konti na lang unlike before na al almost all of the members ng congress and senate are lawyers pero ngayon hindi na for for whatever reason na no? marami na artista uh, yon but staff ng mga staff ng mga artista na nasa congress staff ng ng mga senador although kahit na lawyers din sila they need they also have their staff to create uh, to ano to to assist them no so yon uh, there are also employees of the senate and the congress that are lawyers to make sure that the procedures are followed that's where lawyer come in in the legislative department in the executive department almost all agencies almost all if not all have their legal officers uh, like me uh ano yan uh they parang lahat ng lahat ng agencies merong legal officers to settle matters of uh for example kung meron silang quasi judicial function or administrative function doon papasok yung yung lawyers ng government no and then uh or for example sa national prosecutory service sa, sa ano sa DOJ sa mga prosecutor sa mga fiscal these are lawyers this this must be lawyers na hinahire ng government to file the cases so uh, office of the solicitor general the ombudsman mga ganyan lahat yan maraming abogado diyan why because uh, we are we uh, the executive department is tasked to enforce the law and diba kung if the enforcers of the law are not knowledgeable about the law what what kind of mess are we in diba <laughs> imagine that and uh, the judicial department of course most of the employees here most of the uh, all of the judges rather are lawyers before they can become judges uh para to um actually i forgot about to mention in the executive department pau uh they are uh they are uh, they are under the executive department and they are also lawyers there so judicial department you know judges clerks of court uh, other court staff are usually lawyers no yung mga iba yung mga ano mga administrative matters they are not lawyers pero most of them eventually when they when they take up law and they pass they ano, they still stay sa judiciary so lawyers are everywhere really and outside of this framework marami pang lawyers there are lawyers in development agencies there are lawyers in uh in non-profit organizations in civil society organizations ngos pos mga ganyan there are also lawyers in the academe there are there are lawyers in lgus there are lawyers in constitutional commissions pala i forgot uh, sa 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 coa sa 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 comelec at sa civil service requirement na magkaroon sila ng lawyers within as one of the commissioners ha? and they have also a lot of staff who are who come from uh, the law profession so yan parang lawyers are, lawyers are practically everywhere no so <laughs> in this entire legal justice system it, it, does it work that they are there it's up for you to judge pero yan uh, that is how it works no uh, so we end here we, let's take a 2 minute break and I will ask you personally, I will ask you later uh, kung ano yung mga tanong nyo that we discussed now. And then later, in the, in the, for the readings, tatasaragutin din natin yung mga tinanong nyo dun sa form. So, I have here a question sa, sa chat box and it's a direct message. So, I would assume na ayaw niyang i-discuss yung question niya. Ay, ayaw niyang rather, ayaw niyang uh, siya mismo ang magtanong. So, here. Uh, what happens during the readings? The three readings means uh, bill is the bill is divided into three, and then the first reading is about the first part, second part, or third part. Or does it mean that the entire thing is read three times in different occasions? Or does it mean that the bill is just one that the bill is read just one time, and the remaining two instances are just questions from Congress? 
Gantian. So three readings. Um, yung una is just about the title, no? Uh, they just they just mentioned the title. They just uh, parang kung it's an overview yung una, no? Title lang kasi reading reading the title. The second reading is is the the ano the Congress the ano the legislators are given a copy of the entire bill. Kaya kung mapapansin niyo, di ba, doon sa mga tables nila sa Congress, may, may, there are piles of paper there. Those are copies of the bill. Na kung kung papansin niyo actually, hindi naman talaga nagagalaw, no? <laughs> but kidding aside, uh, yung second reading is really is an opportunity for the uh, for the body to ano, to debate on a certain issue. And the third reading is uh, usually for uh, for grammatical mistakes, spelling errors, mga ganyan. Kung ba parang ano lang sa review, yung third reading. So it's not as if hinati-hati nila na first part, second part, third part. No, uh, ganun. Yung una, ano ba yung, ano ba yung topic natin? For example, reading one, this is about, ano, this is about same-sex marriage, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's reading one. Reading to the entire, they read the entire thing and they discuss among themselves, debate on what is contents, blah, blah, blah. Yung mahabang, mas, 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 parang pinakasubstantial na part is yung second reading. And the third reading is just, ano. Okay, sige, mamaya. Um, <clears throat> yun. So, ganun lang, ganun lang siya. Hindi siya, hindi siya hinahati into three. Uh, naglag ako kanina, three-fourth of what, approval what, ang need for constitutional assembly. Three-thirds vote of the uh, of the entire Congress ang kailangan para may pasa ang uh, ang ang ano ang proposal to amend the constitution. Three-fourths ng Congress. Okay? So, do you have any questions? Do you have, so far, may mga, may mga tanong ba tayo? You can, ano, you can unmute and ask your question. Uh, Mr. Ordonez, do you want to answer? Do you want to ask your question? You have a question here. Ah, yes, po. good evening, po. Yes, good evening. Good evening, po. Ah, uh, regarding lang po dun sa IATF uh, guidelines versus dun po sa provincial EO na yung recently po na nakita natin yung kung pag uh, ng mandatory na pagsusuot po ng face mask. Yes. Kung may times po na mas magiging matimbang yung mga local resolution EOs versus po dun sa mga national EOs. Uh, alam mo actually, ano no? Uh, Di ba dun sa, dun sa hierarchy na pinakita ko kanina, the, the, the administrative issuances uh, on the national level by the president is carries more weight than the local ordinances, di ba? Pero uh, at some point, uh, some some theorists argue na di ba dapat uh, since ano since may local government, they should be left with uh, they should be left to decide on these matters, especially this is a novel case, no? Uh, the I also the yung ano uh, yung personality ng IATF to prescribe rules is parang shaky for some uh, for some people, no? Parang they uh, they parang is that does that really amount to us to an executive issuance mga ano ba yon di ba so it, it's not really clear actually hindi hindi pa na resolve hanggang ngayon yan <laughs> through an through an through an clarificatory opinion from from whoever di ba pero uh, as i see it the iatf uh, the the iatf uh, resolutions uh, is stand parang parang stand bet fares better than local ordinances kasi they are the, they are specifically created for an an emergency situation such as this no uh mr F uh, mr or miss fernandez can uh, I, I hope i answer your question pala uh fernandez who's i can read the full name hello po attorney good evening ah, hello po. good evening Yung, uh, ang question ko po is about the amendment sa Article 17 po ng 1987 Constitution. Nakalagay po dun sa revision, there are two ways to, to revise the Constitution. One is the Constitutional Convention and one is the Constituent Assembly. Whereas dun sa Constituent Assembly po, malinaw sa saligang batas na kung ano yung mode ng pagbuo ng Constituent Assembly. Sa inyo pong palagay, sir, 
paano po kaya mag-call ng isang constitutional convention since it is not stated in the 19 con- in the 19 constitution 1987 constitution. Oh, uh, regarding that matter, I have I haven't really read that. Tsaka tama ka nga. Oo, I forg- I, I I totally missed that part. It is really constituent assembly, <laughs> constitutional assembly. It's constituent assembly. Yes, that's correct. Uh How it is done, yung yung constitutional constitutional convention, it, it they they create uh parang uh, sorry, a committee on the ano on the palaneta, they they create a committee sa pagdraft ng constitution. But definitely that will include yung mga ano uh, leaders or representatives from other areas from other sectors of society. Yun lang. Basically, there's parang I don't rem- I don't remember any parang guidelines on how to com- how to create a constitutional uh, con- uh, constitutional convention, no? Uh, pero if you will if you will consider yung 1987 Constitution and its uh, convention, no? It con- uh, parang it comprises of various literally every parang tinray nilang i-capture halos lahat ng ano uh, halos lahat ng aspects of society including the the religious sector but uh, I'll I will look into that I'll, I'm not really sure now I can't tell you exactly how uh, well, let's prioritize yung mga nag-raise ng hands first I hope I ans- I partially answered your question thank you po attorney yes uh, miss pagaduan and then next is miss miss or mr idos good evening po attorney and good evening everyone i also have a question regarding the amendment or revision of the constitution po and my question is how do you measure if the proposed change in the constitution is substantial or it's only a piecemeal change po? okay Uh, there are two tests that you can. There are two tests that you can actually use, you know, to 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 see if if it's amendment or revision. The first test is quality uh, qualitative test, and the second test is quantitative test. The quantitative test, when you say quantitative, the num it refers to the number of uh, articles, number of sections affected by by the change, you know, na pina propose. By the qualitative, uh, by the qualitative uh, test, sa quality naman kung kahit na isa lang kasi yung pinalita mo, if it is a very substantial ano, if it is a very substantial uh, palanan, if it's a very substantial na provision ng constitution, then it might require revision, even if it's as if even if it's just a few articles of the constitution so yun yung basis natin if it's a revision or a uh, or an amendment no so yun but basically there's not i don't know if i don't recall any major revision of the constitution mm, i don't recall or any moves towards that pero yung ano yung federalism actually we, we can make that as our example no yung sa federalism it is it requires a revision kasi It affects the entire structure of the government. No, it will affect the entire structure of the government. So, uh, it will affect a lot of the articles, a lot of the provisions of the constitution. So, maramit maram maraming involved on. So, that that requires, uh, ano, uh, ano nata? revision of the constitution rather than amendment. So, yun qualitative and quantitative test. That, does that answer your question? Yes po, attorney. Thank you po. Yes. Uh, asan yung kanina? Si Mr. JC ba yan? I forgot the name. Uh, attorney, I have the same question with, ah, okay. with the other, yeah. the first one. Yes po. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, sige, Mr. Estudillo, and we'll go back to Ms. Ungria later. Okay. Attorney, my question is, does the president have the power to suspend a law? Because in sa isang case nung naaraan, uh, nagpasa si nagpasa ang Congress ng double plaka law and then pin, pinirmahan ng presidente. And then hindi po iyon napapatupad hanggang ngayon. Binasa ko sa balita, hindi ko po masyado na intindihan. Yes. Bakit po kaya ganun? Ah, okay. Uh, I can I can probably expound on this na. 
Ah, uh, um, yung sa doble plaka, regarding the doble plaka. Um, ito 'yan. Can the can the president uh, parang abandon yung ang isang batas? Kasi he cannot suspect, he cannot ano, he, definitely he cannot on his own uh, parang stop a law from be, parang kumbaga i-suspend yung batas on its own, on, on his own, 'di ba? Pero regarding yung sa ano, regarding the double plaka law actually, the deferment of its implementation is because of internal problems within the agency. Kasi uh, 'di ba, how will you how will you implement a law na kung walang plaka to begin with, 'di ba? Hindi siya ano Uh, it's not logical to ano to implement it without without even having the pl- enough plates to ano to parang to implement the law so what's what's there to implement diba so yeah, siguro that's the, the that's the call for the suspension of the implementation of that law but definitely they cannot abandon it on the mere for uh, on the mere ano fa- for the mere fact na ano siya na that that is uh, that is the act of congress and they cannot just abandon it ganun yan that's part of uh, so attorney uh, yes temporarily lang po uh, na suspended I would assume yes I would assume yes that it, that it's temporary but definitely not uh, kung gusto niya talagang i-impa- i-abandon yung yung batas na yan he needs to uh, communicate that intention to congress for them to act accordingly Thank that is in that is in relation to the checks and balance of government. Um, Mr. Romanilios and Mr. Gonzalez next. Um yes, hello po attorney, good evening. Can you hear me po? Okay, thank you po attorney. Uh, my question pertains po sa suffrage, particularly the initiative Uh, from the history po, starting sa 1987, the constitution started, uh, may nangyari na po ba ang initiative? Ginawa na po ba to, Either sa national or sa local level? Uh, yeah, there uh, there are instances na merong, in, merong initiative. Pero it's usually more on local. And there was either, uh, and because of that, yata, nagkaroon ng, nagkaroon ng issue on the uh, on the law that parang implement that uh, enables yung that gives guidelines to the uh, palanan to the implementation of this uh, people's initiative no meron actually yung people's initiative in the local and national level and in the constitution regarding the constitution i don't think there is a successful attempt already pero uh, when it comes to local and national laws meron Uh, hey, Patorni, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Mr. Gonzalez, and then Miss Moises later. Hello po, sir. Miss, Miss Gonzalez. Ay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Ay, uh, sorry for that assumption. No? Miss Gonzalez, sorry. Um, Sir, my question po is about the inherent power of the state. Yes. Kasi parehas, parehas po ba sila ng lawmaking process with the other laws? And lalo na po sa tax tax code na laging up for revision almost every year. Tapos hmm. po, can local governments enforce their own tax laws? Okay. Uh, regarding taxation, di ba inherent power of the state yan? And that power re- li- lies in Congress. So, they have the they have the power to to, to create the, the laws that uh, will eventually be the source of the power of BIR to collect the laws, no? At collect the taxes. Uh, that is in, that is ano, that is one of the most uh, powerful uh, that is the most uh, one of the most important powers of Congress, no? They can make the laws that kasi kung walang batas, they, we cannot collect uh, taxes from from people, 'di ba? And local and to answer your second question, local local government units are, are also given the power to tax except that when there is a national law already taxing the same hindi na siya covered dapat so yun yung limitation okay thank you po yes uh let's go to miss moises and then i will read the questions later 
ng mga iba sa chat box. Yes. Hi, sir. Um, audio pa po ba ako? Yes, yes, yes. Medyo mahina, pero yes. Okay po. Um, okay po. Uh, question lang po, sir. Bakit po merong instances na maraming different versions of essentially similar bills na inihahain um, sa both houses? For example, po yung uh, Teenage Pregnancy Prevention Bill or Slash Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention Bill, uh, marami po siyang versions na currently nakahain. Although yung mga uh, differences niya lang po is either one provision lang, two provisions, or may nadadagdag na certain sentence or certain service, bakit uh, wala po bang mechanism uh, within the House of Representatives or kahit sa Senate po wherein uh, pwede po silang mag-usap-usap or mag-consult with each other and then tsaka po sila maghain ng mas comprehensive na bill towards teenage pregnancy prevention, for example, in this na maghain po sila ng um ng iba't ibang bills na mas maraming bills kahit na iisa lang naman yung pinupunta nila and very little lang po yung variations. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yung, yes, thank you for the question. Regarding yung ano, yung yung mechanism actually to to parang reconcile yung dalo, yung dalawang versions ng bill. Kasi ganito yan. Uh, every legislator has ha, ha, uh, parang has equal opportunity to file their their own bills diba? their own version of their the, the same bills and uh one provision one section is sometimes can be ano, can be the difference between the life and death of that law no so uh may freedom sila doon pero that's the that's the purpose eventually of the bicameral conference committee na if they have uh if they have both uh if they both have the same ano the same content actually except for some few differences they can reconcile that and through the bicameral conference committee actually that is a shortcut no uh, supposedly di ba dapat magpapalitan sila ng versions ganyan pero in the case of bicameral conference committee kung merong merong ano kung merong differences para hindi na dumaan sa maraming maraming uh, procedure the bicameral conference committee can suggest a version that is acceptable to both yun yung hinahanap mo na uh, na pala neto yun yung hinahanap mo na mechanism pwede yun or they can cons they can actually ano they can actually do it informally and talk committee level kung ano yung mga ano yung mga intentions ng bawat ano and if they agree on one version they can pass just one Alright, thank you po. Thank you. Okay, let's read muna itong mga questions dito kasi medyo marami na, no? Uh, pwede po mo... Okay, nabasa natin isa. Uh, whenever you... Uh, you mentioned that whenever there are two houses, uh, the two houses of the same bill, they can, con they can conduct bicameral conference committee. However, in the case of ABS-CBN, despite two bills being passed, no bicam conference committee has been done. Does this mean that the bicam is uh, mandatory? Hindi, hindi mandatory ang bicam. Uh, and and, the, and in the in the case of ano in the case of ABS CBN kasi it's either you grant it or not there's really no contentious the uh, contentious na ano doon na uh, provisions i i don't believe there is no kasi parang boilerplate nga yung ano yung uh, yung parang bills to give franchise sa isang sa isang company no if there's really if there's no need for a bicam uh, based on the ano the based on the deliberations of congress there's really no need for it it's not mandatory. Only if needed. Uh, let's read the others. Mm. If there's no same bill, may pasang bill, for instance, may pasang bill Senate and they submitted to the House of Representatives, what will happen po? Maari ba nilang ma-amend yung bill from Senate? Yes, if they think that there are some provisions of the set of the original na ano of the original version ng house na ano na hindi nila gusto or hindi it the it the they say na hindi masyadong nag uh, ano hindi nagre-respond sa need uh, pwede nilang i pwede na i-comment yun dun sa it will go back to the original na house kung saan siya nang galing pwede yun pwede naman yun that's the check and balance kaya nga that's one of the benefits of a bicameral system. Kasi tayo bicameral, di ba? Kung merong ayaw yung isa, yung isang house, pwede can, ano, they can prevent the passing of that law by bringing, by, by, ano, by saying their objection. Pero ang problema lang dun, medyo mahaba talaga. Pero may, at least may checks and balances. That's the ano, trade-off that we need to consider. 
Bakit po mayroong instances na maraming versions of essentially similar bills by different House of Representatives? Ayun, hindi naman nasagot na natin yung kanina. Ah, uh, itong San Vicente, pwede bang I'll answer this na lang after? Uh, kasi may may ano pa tayo, may questions pa tayo dun sa bandang dulo. Minimum number of people sa conference committee. Merong merong ano, merong specific number 'yan. Uh, revision po bang amendment lang ng constitution if we add a qualification who may run or be elected as president? Well, it's ano ah, I I think it it requires a revision. Kasi say I think it's something substantial. Ah, uh, itong question na to mamaya meron ding isa. Meron meron din yun dun sa kabila. Im uh, just want to know the impact and process who certifies requests etc of certifying a bill as urgent. The president usually insists the the president usually uh parang informs congress na uh, this bill is certified as urgent based on need. Sasabihin niya yun, pero it's up to the congress to ano to act on it expeditiously or not. Nakasak na sa kanila yon. Kung sino yung pabilisin, kayang-kaya nilang gawin yan. Just like what they did with the Bayanihan Acts. Pero if they don't, nasa hanggang ano lang, hanggang recommendation lang ang president, no? If there is any amendment or new law needed, who will create it? Will it be senators or the Congress? Uh, actually, ano ha, let's the Siguro for this for just because we are talking in technical terms we 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 use congress as both house of senate and house of representatives no pero i understand the question kasi usually ang sinasabi natin na congress ay yung house of representatives lang no pero uh, for the sake of ano for the sake of emphasizing na there are two houses uh we ano we say na ano uh pala no We say that it's the House of Representatives and House of Senate comprising the entire Congress. So if there's a new law that needs to be created or there's amendment that needs to be done, it doesn't matter kung saan ang galing. It could be both, it could be from both, it could be from just one, pero it doesn't matter. Kahit na yung original na law ay nanggaling sa, from one, originated from one house. If you need to amend it, if you need to change it, if you need a new law, either either houses can, 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 can originate from ano. anywhere except may exception diyan uh, yung mga appropriations bill tax bills mga ganyan they, they come from the house of representatives with regards to the constitutional convention po who can decide po who will attend it's the it's the congress as a whole um existence of unjust laws in the philippines well there is the i know the prerogative to or the rather the duty to are there and ang tanong niya are, is there an unjust law in the Philippines uh the only the only way for us to know that there, it is unjust is for us to challenge it before the Supreme Court and it's the it's the Supreme Court who uh parang decides if it's uh, if the, if it does not conform with our constitution hmm Sige, mamaya na yung iba. Let's proceed to the ano to the other questions, no? Kasi medyo marami 'yun. Uh, regarding naman ito sa readings. Okay. <clears throat> In the case of San Vicente, the driver who drove uh, over a security guard was the information filed by the prosecutor correct down giving the crime to frustrated homicide instead of frustrated murder. Wasn't the act obviously motivated by intent to kill using a motor vehicle which qualifies the crime into murder. Okay. If you will look at uh, yung sa San Vicente case, ano, intent to kill using a motor vehicle is not real. I don't think that's a qualifying circumstance from murder to homicide. In the first place, uh, it was it was parang if not for the act being parang deliberate na meron na siyang time to think about it and then tinuloy pa rin niya. There was intent to kill because that is ano no that is uh, assumed that is presumed under our ano under our law. Uh, intent to kill using a motor vehicle is not really does not really qualify it as murder. This is my opinion ha and unfortunately we are not supposed I am not supposed to comment on this because of the what we call sub judice rule no because it is uh, pending before our courts I cannot really comment on it in the propriety of yung sa ano sa was the prosecutor correct no pero the wisdom of the prosecutors ano prosecutors pala decision uh, 
uh, we cannot question that, of course, uh, here in this forum. Pero yun, de definitely there was in, uh, there there is a presumption of intent to kill in homicide cases. So yun, it was uh, yun. May mamaya may question dito about the difference between murder and homicide. Uh, why is it not considered abandonment of one's own victim when the driver stopped for a second after security guard fell on the ground and immediately thereafter ran over him? It, uh, I know traffic in Porsche, right? Um, it is actually kasama dun sa information that it is abandonment of his uh, his own victim. It is added. Hindi lang siguro na publicize yung fact na yun, pero it's there na kasama siya sa information. Does the court, which has, uh, which has the jurisdiction over the case, have the power to qualify or increase the level of offense charge? Unfortunately, that's not that's not possible, no. Meron tayong variance doctrine sa batas, which uh, parang parang pwede ka pwede mo siyang convict for a lesser crime, which is included or necessarily includes the crime, pero not higher. Hindi pwede mas kanaay. Ito ang information is for frustrated homicide. Hindi mo siya pwede convict for frustrated murder. Uh, yun, yun, yun yung hindi, hindi yun allowed sa variance doctrine. Although, you can actually convict him for a lower crime but not for a higher one. Can the Pau be involved in the arrest of San Vicente given the lack of financial capacity of the victim? Eh, kung arrest ang tinutukoy natin, it's only the P, it's it's the PNP who has the, the power to do arrests. No? Pero can the Pau be involved in the ano, prosecution of the case? No need because we have prosecutors, we have fiscals to do that. No, the pow is usually uh, the pow is usually procured by by accused uh, by by the accused who who has no capacity to pay. So yeah. is is court of, is the court of appeals higher than DOJ? <clears throat> it's not really a question of uh, being higher or lower in the hierarchy. Pero kasi decisions of the DOJ uh, on ma decisions of the DOJ. Diba? from the prosecutor from the local prosecutors sa uh, sa ano sa sa court level no may prosecutors doon tapos uh, any this uh, yung kapag ano kapag dismiss doon sa lower uh, sa lower level it gets appealed to the uh, ano to the DOJ parang kumbaga kung dismiss doon sa baba iangat yan sa DOJ now there, we have uh we we have to cross no after the doj uh it goes to supposedly uh, if you exhaust all administrative remedies uh it goes to the office of the president actually because the doj is under the executive department no pero that's rarely the case uh usually hindi na pinapaabot sa ano yan sa sa president ang ginawa dito sa case na to is from the ano from the doj dinala siya sa Court of Appeals, which is a proper remedy, by the way. No? Uh, for example, decisions of executive departments on account of their quasi-judicial or prosecutorial functions, they can they are appealable to the Court of Appeals. For example, sa BIR, if the BIR decided uh, against a person sa, ano, sa, about a tax case, pwede yung i-appeal sa Court of Appeals. The same way kapag labor case, Pag galing sa NLRC, it can go through the CA, to the Court of Appeals, and then to the Supreme Court. So, yun. Really, uh, it's not really a question of whether Court of Appeals is higher. Kasi, ano yun eh, they, have, uh, they are co-equal branches of government. No? They belong to co-equal branches of government. So, no one's really, in a sense, higher or lower. Pero, ano siya, uh, appealable sa Court of Appeals yung... yung yung determination of uh, probable cause ng DOJ. Why did the police not arrest San, San Vicente? That's a good question, no? Uh, unfortunately kasi, uh, by the time na napublicize yung, yung video ng, ano, ng, ni San Vicente, the police were, uh, parang, ano na, kung ba, parang wala na yung, hindi na siya hot pursuit. Hindi na siya, there's no, immediacy involved kasi pwedeng pwede ka nang kumuha ng warrant of arrest from a, from a judge no so at the time hindi pa nila inaresto si San Vicente that is the that, i think that is also that's correct no tama yun na hindi nila inaresto siya at that time 
Okay. Ito, ito naman more on general, no? More on general ito about police officers. Would requiring body comes for police officers require a constitutional amendment? This is in relation to the privacy of the people that may be affected by the execution of the police officers of their work. No, no no need really for... Uh, the constitution is not that detailed to be... Uh, to require constitutional amendment, no? Then, uh, our privacy laws are enough and I think this, this is even uh, covered by a Supreme Court... Uh, rule on the use of body cams. So there's no need really for a constitutional amendment to implement this. How do you distinguish murder from homicide? Okay. Usually, meron tayong tinatawag na qualifying circumstances that qualify homicide to murder. No? But in this case kasi, uh, it was, uh, ano ba? Kung hindi nga, gaya na sabi ko kanina, if it weren't for the fact that uh, tinuluyan niya yung tao no it would it could have appeared to be an accident and murder is really something that uh parang although some some would argue that uh it it could be murder kasi uh parang it has vi it is vile diba parang it's uh it's parang it's it's a gross parang violation of the law diba pero there are, i don't uh, parang if I if it were me, uh, if it were me, uh, I would just I would just uh, no, say it's homicide for me for me, and <laughs> unfortunately I cannot really go beyond that. No, so next I uh, by amending or revising a law or, or the constitution should other laws related or be affected by it be amended or revised as well. Automatic yun. once the once there is an amendment or revision of the constitution. Uh, y yung yung version na yon ang ang ano ang applicable the re the, the ano whatever is not ano uh, whatever is not covered uh, whatever is affected will be ano will be eradicated pero mat matatanggal siya in the case of law uh, kapag na amend na or kapag na revise na yung batas well if, if usually we call it amendment or a, a new law no that supersedes the new the older law the new law is ano is applicable Hindi na applicable yung luma. Next, uh, do you personally think that the 1987 Constitution shall be amended considering the current state of affairs in the Philippines? If yes, what is are your proposed amendments there too? Ako, if I were to change the Constitution, I would just change one thing. No, It's about the political dynasties. We must define it in the Constitution itself. We must define the limits of that. Uh, we must... We must uh, define the limits of that provision dapat uh, hindi na hindi niya hindi na siya nangangailangan ng uh, enabling legislation why because it is against the interest ng mga political clans in the in the Philippines no kasi imagine kapag nagpasa sila ng batas uh, that will define political dynasty that will punish political dynasties they are affected no, pero if it's in the constitution itself, there's no need for a new law, and they can be prosecuted as such already. No, sayang, sayang. If uh, di ba may, may provision sa constitution against ano uh, against political dynasties, pero it requires a law defining what it is. So may gagawa ba ng batas about that? <laughs> I don't think there is. No. So yun. Uh, is the job, double jeopardy applicable for Vong Navarro's cases since the court dismissed the case, oh, case already? No, it was not the court who dismissed the the Vong Navarro case. It was the DO, it was the prosecution. It was the prosecutor palang level. So it was it, it was ano, it was appealed to the DOJ and eventually to the Court of Appeals. Kaya numabot doon kasi hindi hindi naman court ang nagdismiss noon before. It was the ano, it was the Prosecute, it was the uh, prosecutor. Uh, regarding the case of Wong Navarro, what usually are the reasons for a case to be reopened? Because I thought this case had been closed. No, it hasn't, it hasn't been closed. And in fact, when you say a case is closed, it is because uh, there's no timely appeal that was made. Here, dun sa information that was the, uh, parang because of the, the resolution of the prosecutor there, hindi, hindi siya nag-close hindi siya nag -close technically kasi na appeal siya Diba? It's still appealable. And there's a period for the appeal. No? Yan. Hindi siya closed, really. It, it's, and there, therefore, it's not reopened. It has, it has been all open all along. Nakalimutan lang ng public because of, ano, 
uh, hindi, hindi siya masyadong pinag-uusapan pero it's, it was never closed. Okay. Uh, can you explain the hierarchy of court legal decisions and its relation to revived rape case of Wong Navarro? Again, this is not revived. This has been open all along. Okay. Um, hierarchy of court. In, unfortunately, this, not, this does not involve yet the hierarchy of courts because this is this involves the hierarchy within the DOJ. Uh, from the prosecutor to the DOJ, kaya lang sila napunta sa court, sa CA, because of uh, kaya lang sila napunta sa CA because of yung power nga ng CA to review uh, decisions of the DOJ. Yeah. Next. Uh, can Republic Act number 11659 usher in a new era of, ito may more on theoretical siya, no? uh, can RA 11659 usher in a new era of coloni colonialism in our country? What effect will it have on Filipino citizens whose main source of income is the aforementioned public services once a company is owned entirely by foreign entities? Okay, sige, medyo maraming maraming aspects yung tanong, ano? Will it usher a new era of colonialism? Some argue, no? Yung mga protectionist, this is more of an, 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 ano, a discussion of eco economics rather than law, no? Uh, those protectionists would claim na, yeah, probably yes, no? Kasi marami na sa mga mag na, na reclassify as public services from public utility can now be owned by foreign corporations, no? So that does that mean uh, that, so that means that uh, foreigners will own these uh, public services. Uh, wholly, no? Wholly. And that, for some, that could be a new year. That could be colon that could be a new phase of colonialism. Pero for the, ano, for the capitalists naman, for the, uh, for the capitalists, no, it is just a way to improve yung services uh, of these public services that we're talking about, no? So yun, mm, there are two views and I will I, I'll, I'll leave it to you to decide. Okay, so what effect will it have on Filipino citizens whose main source of income is the aforementioned public services once such a company is owned by uh, entirely by foreign entities? Doesn't matter, no? We are, are you, uh, parang yung labor, they will still be subject to our labor laws. So what, whatever, ano, kung bagay, mga empleyado nila, those, uh, which for example are affect ang problema if they are ano if they are pa, uh, pala nun, businesses local businesses na nakadepende sa sa mga public services na to and eventually here comes a foreign uh, entity that can capture the market uh, efficiently dun talaga mawawalan sila ng ano mawawalan sila ng uh, mawawalan sila ng market Pero uh, the Philippine Competition Commission can look into it if it's ano, anti-competitive. So uh, essentially, kung ako, ako lang, my, my, my understanding of this is the Philippine First Policy is weakened by this, uh, ano, by this new law. Pero is it for the better or for worse? It's up for you to decide. No? So yeah, so those are the questions that we have. So uh, okay, so unless you have questions, we have we can uh, we can call it a day. So do you have any questions for a while for now? I don't know the context of this uh, uh, this question. But good evening. Okay, I'd like to ask po if the bill can die at any at any of the three readings or it really has to go through the all three readings before it can really die. No, if they don't like it, then sa umpisa pa lang, the first reading, uh, they cannot, uh, they, they can choose not to act on it, really. <laughs> Wala pala, parang it will not see the light of day. I don't know this Rita Famparo question, I don't see the, I don't know the context. Uh, with regards to open and close of cases, is there a pre prescription of cases? Yes. Uh, there are prescriptions of cases provided for in the revised penal code. No? Uh, depending sa classification ng, ng, ano, ng palanol, depende sa classification ng crimes, um, pwedeng mag-prescribe ang isang crime for one year, after five years, after ten years, maganyan, for graver offenses, pag after twenty years at hindi pa rin na-prosecute, after it was 
uh, after it was committed, pwede na siyang, ano, pwede na siyang, hindi, uh, it is not, it will no longer be considered as a crime. So, good, uh, in the case of Wong Navarro, does it mean that uh, as long as there is an appeal, it will not be considered as a closed case? Yes. Pero ano, ano pa lang nga eh, wala pa nga sa ano, hindi pa nga, hindi pa nga, hindi pa nga naka-file in court yata ito. I don't know. Pero, yun. So, the, the decision of the CA is actually in just directing the prosecutor to file the necessary information before it even uh, before it even reaches the courts. No? Can a closed case be opened again? If yes, how? Depende, no? Uh, what is the reason for its closure? Baka pwedeng, ano lang, due to inactivity, inaka-archive, mga ganun, can be open, can it be open? There are periods, really. This is more technical, more on procedure, no? Which, uh, I think we can discuss on the third week. Uh, last two questions. If the president vetoes the proposed bill, how override, how does override work? Okay. <clears throat> Overriding a veto, I think this is, ano, I think this is, I don't know, uh, this is separate. Two-thirds, uh, no, three, two-thirds ba yan? Oh yes, two-thirds. What is, what's your take on shifting presidential to parliamentary form of government? I'm not a fan of parliamentary government. I mean, I don't see yung shift in the type of government at all, no? To see the change. Kasi, if it will be the same people who will be governing the country, whether it's a parliamentary or a presidential form of government, it doesn't matter really. If they are corrupt, they will remain corrupt, no? And they will they will institute uh, parang foolproof na mga mechanisms to make sure that uh, their corruptions, that the, 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 the corruption remains to be seen, diba? So it doesn't really, I don't really, I'm not really a fan of shifting you know, governments. No? Sabi nila, the parliamentary form of government, the federal form of government, uh, ano, is parang bawal lang bobo doon, parang ganun, come on. <laughs> Still, at the end of the day, meron pa rin namang butuhan sa mga, sa mga, ano, sa ng mga members of parliament. So at that level alone, di ba, meron ng, uh, there can be a problem already. And, as far as ano as far as i'm concerned eh, if self interested yung mga ano members of the parliament they will vote for whoever best represents their interest diba so no difference from the from the current system okay let's may mga dalawang nagre-raise ng hands uh miss de ungria first and then miss miss gonzales later hello po attorney rinig po ba yes yes My question lang po is, in one of our readings po tungkol sa arrest ng Piston 6 is, why does the government have to silence critics and how can an activist or ordinary citizens protect themselves for, from this type of situation? Hmm. Why does the government silence, silence critics? No? The answer to that is rather apparent. No, They, they don't want critics. <laughs> <laughs> yun lang yan. Ganun. How, how can they protect? Unfortunately, we need uh, we need better legal systems no, that protect activists. Eh ngayon nga, demonized ang activists, di ba? So the, the government can very much use its power to decimate activists, those who, ano, those who, pala nun, uh, those who voice their concerns against the government. But that should not uh, we should if you consider yourself an uh, as an activist you should not fret no because uh activism shines the greatest under the most extreme conditions so although we don't want the extreme conditions to happen pero uh we have seen in history that activism is indeed an uh, activism will always crop up once the conditions are not you know, are not forgiving so yun lang yeah, that's my message uh, regarding protection of activists, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to exist in this country. No? There's not, not a lot of uh, interest groups parang banding together to form a 
very strong uh, a strong and uh, alliance of uh, activists that can protect themselves really uh yes miss gonzalez i think that i can entertain this last question thank you for attorney yes hello po, sir um i just want to ask po how can theoretically the current government um change the constitution because nalalako po nung unang like for the first weeks of the term they were may mga discussion na parang babaguhin yung parang election process na ang tawag nito like pwedeng ma-reelect yung president vice president but according to the 1987 constitution hindi po siya the people's initiative cannot introduce constitutional revisions but only amendments so i just want to ask po how can they theoretically make their amend yung mga plans nila the current government work okay uh in order to change parang yung yung how our current constitution works is parang ganda yung ano niya yung tone niya uh in order to change the system you need to be part of the system no and in order to change the electoral uh, process no and yung term limits um ano you need to go through the i uh, know you need to go through the uh, no, the constituent assembly or the constitutional convention to propose amendments to the constitution that's the only way right now no because we are a cons we, we are uh, no, we are bound by our constitution so they need to they need really to uh, no, to go through that process but uh i think i don't think it's it will be difficult because a uh, majority of you, as we know, majority of Congress are uh, really, parang they they belong to the same, ano, to the same um, party or not really party, because hindi naman strong party system sa Pilipinas. But they have, we can say that they have the same in, same interest. No, but but they can do that if they if only the president can certify it as ano, as urgent. Tapos the 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 Congress acts fast. Pero hindi kasi madaling magano eh magpalit ng constitution and they they definitely need to change the constitution before that happens no so yun y yun lang muna yung route na nakikita ko na legal as of now whatever uh, if there are extra legal routes i don't want to know <laughs> yeah Thank that's my answer i hope that answers your question Okay. Uh, the, the, will we pro, will I provide you with recordings of the session? Yes. Uh, it will be available to go tomorrow, siguro on YouTube. No, let's check. Okay. So I hope this was an uh, no, uh, this was a fruitful night for all of us. I'll stop sharing. Uh, I hope this is a fruitful night for all of us. I hope you learned some things from from me. But ito ha. Uh, there, as you as you may have noted, hindi lahat ng mga tanong niyo nasagot ko because I'm just come on, I'm just <laughs> an ordinary person just like you. I don't know everything that there is to know about the law. But uh, I hope this is part. This sparks your interest in understanding our laws, maganyan. I hope this uh gives you the uh, parang an ample opportunity for uh for discovery of other things. And your curiosity, it sparks your curiosity about how our law works, how how it is about uh, how it, how it is in our society, current society. So, ano, uh, this is my way of saying that you need to dig deeper, you need to uh, investigate your uh, society. Because if we don't, who will, we, we will uh, Power will be unchecked. Power will be uh, will remain to those who hold it. If we do not do anything about it.